All right, all right, podcast, which I'm recording. Uh, I'm recording this Sunday night. I'm going to post it Monday. But I want to see what happens if I record it the night before on the commute home as opposed to the day of on the commute there. And I'm feeling uh, okay. Not too tired. Recharged my batteries. Watched the movie The Last Starfighter. Classic. I think considered a uh, Star Wars clone in the 1980s that was also one of the first movies to use uh, total CGI on the spaceships. All computers, no models. And I found myself, uh, I found myself weirdly watching the movie going, you know what, that was a great moment between the two of them. No, that was a good, that was a good moment. I don't know why people, why people don't appreciate this film more. That was, oh, that, that was a good moment between those two. Like, like suddenly I'm an acting coach and I'm, uh, congratulating the actors. No, that was, that was well done. You really took your time with that beat. Good. Good job. You really took your time with that beat. Good job. I had an acting teacher once who uh, who described himself as a scientist of the theater. And I uh, here's my problem. I'm just down to earth enough to find that to be odious and just pretentious to just pretentious enough to know exactly what he's talking about for me to feel the same way about stand up. <laughs> we loathe in other people what is truly within ourselves. But I would never want to describe myself like that. And I don't know if that's me being humble or... You know what? Maybe I'm not secure with... If I was truly secure... It takes a lot of self-security to uh, to call oneself a scientist of something that is not remotely science. His wife, I discovered one day... I, I tried to talk... His wife also worked in the theater with him. I think they, they produced together. And and I I went up to her and I, I asked her something and she didn't respond. I asked again and she turned and she said, Oh, oh, oh hey, listen, I, I'm i deaf in my right ear. And my first thought was, So that's how they're still married. Ho! I don't know why I went into a Thundercats moment there. Ho! Thunder! Thunder! Thundercats! Ho! Is that how the Sword of Omens actually worked in Thundercats? Is that how the Sword of Omens... Is that, is that how it worked? Because it only seemed to work when he said, Thunder! Thunder! Thundercats! Ho! Maybe, maybe it would help the world if all the military, if they ever wanted to use their weapons, they had to shout something like that before using the weapon. I mean, it would certainly cut down on the surprise attack. Like, Lion-O, if my understanding is, if, if he had to do that every single time he activated the sword, he could never do a surprise attack. I never saw Lionel go, Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats. <sighs> and then the, the sword says, what? I didn't, I didn't catch that. Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats. <sighs> Bad guys are like, do you, do you guys hear something outside? And they just hear muffled. Although this whole podcast is muffled because I'm wearing... 
my mask in the car. No one is with me. I just, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it, everybody. Speaking of which, speaking of COVID, I find as I walk down the street, if there are other people nearby, they are just darting away from me. And I realize that because my hair is disheveled and I'm, I'm a little, I have a, I have a disheveled appearance. You know, my shirts needs to be ironed. My pants are falling apart. I probably, I, I, I think I look a little COVIDy. I think people look at me and they go, oh, he's got to have it. Look at him. <laughs> and I got to say, it's nice. It's nice to, uh, this will be the closest I will ever be to being intimidating. I guess I'm intimidating the way a plague rat is intimidating. Ah, lovely. Well, this is going good so far. Normally in the morning I talk about my bowel troubles. Now I can talk about my bowel troubles this evening. I had uh, steak teriyaki. Or no, beef teriyaki. Which I guess isn't steak, it's beef. I think it's hitting me the wrong way. Everything I eat hits me the wrong way. I don't think this body was designed to actually be used. I think this was a show model. <laughs> Thunder. Thunder. Thundercats. He. No, you got to say ho, Lion-O. It's Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, ho. Thundercats are on the move. Thundercats are loose. That's a great song for Thundercats, but it doesn't make any sense when you look at it. You know, as you if you compare the song to the story, it makes no sense. Thundercats are on the move. Thundercats are loose. They were never prisoners. They were refugees. Feel the magic, hear the roar. Thundercats are loose. Well, the feel the magic that, yeah, they were magic. Hear the roar. They did roar. Well, they never, did they roar? I don't even think they really, they never roared. Lino said, ho, which isn't really a roar. It's more of a, it's more of a loud exclamation. It's a cry. I wouldn't call it a roar. Thunder, 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 cats. Thunder, 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 cats. I think deep down one of the reasons why I love that show is because it was animated in Japan and there was a anime sen- uh, sensibility and the artistry of it that uh, was really great. And what I love about Japanese animation um, is that they don't... Uh, I feel like they... When when they... Uh, for certain... Thi- like, for instance, when they're, when they're drawing evil characters. They don't hold back. I mean, unless it's an absolute, you know, kiddie show. When they draw an evil character, they they treat it seriously and they make it look scary. And I always admired that. Like, they're, they're always, it, you know, it, it uh, you know, Mumra the Ever-Living looks creepy. This is a creepy looking dude. They didn't dumb it down. Visually. An Egyptian mummy who calls his, calls on the ancient spirits of evil that turn him into a, uh, a, a muscly guy. And yet, I think his weakness was he, if he sees his reflection, he, can't, he, he gets sick. So he has self-esteem problems. <laughs> So Mumra, how long have you had this hang up with the, the uh, looking in a mirror? How long have you had this issue? As far back as I can remember. I have never liked my appearance. Well, if it's any consolation, Mumra, you are dead. And uh, your body is decaying. So you need, to, you need to go easy on yourself. There's only, you know, there's only uh, so much you can do. It's not about 
a skin melting. It's more to do with a history of being rejected by women. And I've created this false story that I am ugly. Mumra, it's not, you're not, it's not that you're ugly. You are, however, well, you are scary now, but that you're dead. And I thought, I'm a little confused, Mumra. I thought you wanted to be scary. No, I, I want to be scary, but scary, but also attractive. Like if Chitara wanted, you know, she was interested. I would never be interested in Chitara, but if she, I, I would be nice. If Chitara was interested in me, it would be nice. Uh, okay, so that's... In that rendition, Mumra, who is clearly Egyptian, is somehow Jewish. Lovely. Uh, okay, well... What else can I tell... Well, alright, I'll share this thought that popped in my head. It's been about... Uh, it's been about, I guess, a week now since it was Biden was declared the winner... And, uh, and I don't know if it's me, but, you know, I'm living right now in Los Angeles and I do, everyone seems happier to me. I don't know. I just, I feel a collective, even the weather got warmer all of a sudden. Even, I think even LA is happier. And I don't usually go into politics or talk about politics because I, I don't want to alienate people. Uh, but I, especially because I think it, there's a real danger here of, you know, us becoming divided and hating each other. And that, that just doesn't accomplish anything. We have to find a way to find some common ground uh, and find something that we can all agree on. And I think one thing that we could, whether you're a Trump supporter or a Biden supporter or whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or a Libertarian or whatever, I think we need to find some places of common agreement. And I think one thing that anyone could agree on is that I don't know how to give a woman an orgasm. And I think that either side of the aisle, you know, I could provide a demonstration. And I think, well, that was creepy. Wow, that was, uh... so let me just explain. (laughs) My heart is pounding. Some guy charged me as I was going through the intersection. Perhaps, well, this is what happens when you record a podcast while driving. Wow. Who? Adrenaline. I don't know what that was about. Perhaps he too agreed that, uh, that I would not, uh, I can't, uh, <laughs> I think he felt so strongly that I can't give a woman an orgasm that he really was out to get me. That was, that was pretty intense. It almost seemed, you know what, that was creepy because it almost seemed like he wanted me to run him over. It all, like he was like, are you, why are you charging? That was bizarre. Wow, wowzers. I gotta take a minute there. I do not know what that was about, but it was, it's, that's creepy to have somebody running at you, even if I'm in the car. It's, cause I don't wanna hit anybody. What a way to, <laughs> what a way to end the podcast with me about to have a heart attack. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never been, this is a first for me. I've never been charged at while driving. Uh, not a good thing. That person needs some help. Um, wow. Uh, all right. Well, um, if you'll excuse me, I need to go, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to. 
how to go on with that. That was that was creeperific right there. All right. Well, um, listen, this could have this could have been a really really depressing end uh, to this podcast. This could have been this could have been court evidence. That's what this could have been. Uh, man. All right. Well, uh, be safe out there, and hey, maybe don't charge a car. <coughs> It's how my body reacts to fear. Sneezes. It's a defense mechanism. Oh no, he's got COVID. Run away from him.